Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandages, and uh, we've got a lot of weather to talk about. Some big changes coming our way in just the next 24 to 36 hours. Today, the story is the warmth. It'll be on the breezy side, and we've also got the threat for some severe weather as we go into the afternoon and evening hours as a very strong cold front that's going to bring us our big changes arrives across the area, dropping temperatures and initiating that threat. That cold front threat is at a level two in terms of severe weather, gusty winds and isolated tornado can't be ruled out as well. I'll go into more detail on that in just a minute. And the cold air that pours in behind this front will set the stage as we head into tomorrow night, early Friday morning for another weak storm center to move along the coastline and possibly use that cold air to initiate some wintry weather across the area. Best chances for that still look to be the farther north you're located, likely north of I-10. We'll get into more detail on that in just a minute. Temperatures this morning already are into the low 70s. We've got that onshore southerly flow that'll get a little bit breezy as that cold front gets closer. We get that gradient to squeeze in and winds kick up and that'll push temperatures today into the mid to upper 70s. Now we saw this same scenario a few weekends ago when it was very warm. We got up to around 80. It was on the muggy side too. Then that front came in and initiated the spin in the atmosphere and we had some storms. A similar threat comes our way as we head on into tonight. We're not talking about seven tornadoes, but the threat is there for a few isolated with the front coming on through. So here's the breakdown on its arrival this afternoon into this evening. You'll really start to feel those winds shift and that severe risk from the Storm Prediction Center is a level two. It goes all the way up to five levels, so it is a little bit higher than what we saw two weekends ago when it was a level one, so that risk is slightly elevated and it looks to be east of I-45, that best threat for this evening. Now the cold air behind it could be the chilliest air of the season coming our way as highs tomorrow. Won't get out of the mid 40s. We'll be locked in with the cloud cover, maybe some drizzle and mist, just a raw, nasty type of day before our second scenario, our storm system arrives Thursday evening into the overnight and early Friday morning. I want to show you radar right now because there's nothing going on out there aside from a few very spotty showers uh, south of Huntsville. And we may see a few spotty ones before the cold front arrives later today. There's where the front is up even north of Dallas right now. So it's got some uh, real estate to cover as it sags southeastwards and arrives here later on this evening behind it a big push of cooler air you can see in the panhandle uh, of Oklahoma we've already got some snow shower activity there I want to take you through the modeling here on our storm threat for today and then we'll jump ahead to tomorrow evening and Friday in just a minute or so but here we go through the afternoon 5 p.m. starting to see the storms fire on up as our front approaches from the northwest notice north of I-10 and to the east of I-45 looks to be that main threat zone there, Liberty County. Look out for later today. And there's the front itself sagging on through here by 930. Winds are shifting. It turns blustery. And we've got a little squall line developing, pushing through downtown Houston uh, later this evening, well after the sun goes down. It moves offshore, but that front is not going to go very far. We're going to have a wave of low pressure develop along it, and it's going to use that front as its storm track and track along the coastline, throwing moisture on shore, interacting with the cold air plunging in behind this cold front later today. So here's that storm threat from the Storm Prediction Center. It was updated just a couple hours ago. In the yellow shading is a level two threat. Again, it goes up to five, meaning most likely one least likely, and that encompasses Harris County and all areas off to the east and south and north of I-10 as well. Farther to the west, that threat looks a little bit lower, but you're still in a level one. So the threats we're mainly concerned with here are going to be strong, gusty winds, possibly damaging winds in excess of 55 to 65 miles per hour. Hail, not so much of a threat here. Flooding potential, if we get some of these cells to move a little bit on the slower side, dropping a lot of rain, it could lead to some brief water on some of the roadways, but that'll be handled pretty quickly. And that tornado threat, although it is low, it is not completely zero. There's always that threat there when we've got an incoming cold front interacting with that humid, somewhat unstable air mass that's currently in place. All right, now let's talk about what happens after that front drops on through. We'll start things off tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Notice the widespread overcast conditions. It'll be a cloudy day, a damp day, Windy two out of the north driving in the chillier air. So we're starting off tomorrow morning 
not terribly cold for overnight lows. We should be in the 30s and low 40s. Instead, we'll start things off in the mid to upper 40s. Now, going through the day, we should be going in the upwards direction and warming up during the daylight hours. We're actually doing the opposite. Temperatures are slowly dropping with that northerly wind ushering in and transporting in that colder air. And then watch what happens here as we head into late Thursday afternoon early Thursday evening. We've got that center of low pressure developing along that stalled out boundary, the cold front off the coastline. Northerly winds transporting in the colder air, moisture moving in on top of that. And you see a different shading on here than what we're used to. The green obviously indicates rain, some of it on the heavier side, close to the coastal locations. But to the northwest, there is pink showing up. And that's an indicator of wintry mix sleet possibility of some freezing rain and some wet snowflakes in the mix as well something you may also point out here is that temperatures are not anywhere near cold enough freezing 32 this is at the surface here what the models are showing us is that even though at the surface it's too warm for snow or even that snow to stick in the upper levels of the atmosphere it's cold enough that when that precipitation leaves the cloud as snow, it remains as snow until it encounters that warm tongue of air at the surface and it starts to melt. If it doesn't melt in time, we get that wet snowflake. If it does start to melt a little bit more, we get those sleep pellets and it tries to refreeze if it encounters another cold tongue of air. So it's all about the levels of the atmosphere in this type of set scenario. Think of it as a floor to ceiling scenario. At the floor where we all live, the surface, temperatures need to be at 32 or less to promote snow to stick the ground to freeze. When you go farther up close to the ceiling, you get warm tongues of air, cold tongues of air, and that affects the type of precipitation we see uh, reaching the ground. If we have cold from the surface to the cloud all the way up, you get snow, you get a warm tongue here and there, you get some sleet pellets, and if you get just a little bit of some cold air at the surface, if we were seeing temperatures here at 32 and we had rain, we'd be very concerned for freezing rain and icing not so much this time around with those air temperatures at the surface, just too warm for that. Here we are at 8 p.m. on Thursday, starting to see some drier air work on in here. This doesn't look like that substantial of a low pressure system to warrant this to be an ongoing event through Thursday night. This particular model starts to wind things down and show some areas of dry air working on in that'll work to eat up a lot of that precipitation. And then by the time we get to Friday morning, Travel concerns for your Friday morning commute? Well, according to this model run, not so much. We do have temperatures getting colder, so if we have wet surfaces, there could be some black ice, but thankfully the winds out of the north should help to dry things out, especially as skies begin to clear out too. And then by Friday mid-morning, most of this is gone. So there are scenarios here. That's just one model that I showed you. There are several that we look at, and now that we're within 36 hours, we can look at our more higher resolution models to get a better handle on what the atmosphere might be doing, the profile of the atmosphere, the warm tongues, the cold tongues, uh, what might be showing, what type of precipitation. So I want to show you one here. This is what we just looked at. This is our in-house model called the graph, and that was showing the colder air in our northern areas north of I-10 and that wintry mix scenario there using a little bit more of cold air, but as you saw with that last model run, it's also a little bit drier. And then we've got the GFS. So this is our global scale models. This is what we can use to look at a week, week and a half, two weeks out into the future, as well as the European. So they're kind of showing not as much cold air here. You see the GFS by Thursday night only has a little bit of some wintry mix, possibly with some cold rain on north of I-10. So what can you take away from this? This is not a major winter storm by any means. If you're out and about Thursday evening into early Friday morning, you may get some sleep pellets hitting your windshield. I don't expect any issues on the roadways. However, if the temperatures north of I-10 in our northern cities and counties get down to around freezing, the bridges and overpasses start to become a little more vulnerable. So they're completely covered by that cold air and encasing them. So they can drop to freezing and create icy conditions a little bit quicker. But according to the, both of these models, that's not looking very likely. Now we talked about the levels of the atmosphere, right? So this is, I'm, what I'm gonna show you here is something called the 850 millibar temperatures. Millibars are just a fancy words for pressure and the different heights in the atmosphere. So 850 millibars up is about 5,000 feet into the lower parts of the atmosphere. We're looking at temperatures here. In this scenario, temperatures at or below freezing would be crucial to giving us wintry weather. And I'm going to start things off here Thursday morning at 9 a.m. You're seeing temperatures at 5,000 feet that are still well above freezing. 
As we head towards 5 p.m., as you saw in the models, that's when the wintry mix is starting to show up, especially north of the city. 5,000 feet up, air temperatures are starting to support some of that wintry weather. College Station down to 33 degrees at that point in time, 36 at Brenham, 40 in Tomball. So that's just that cold level of air at 5,000 feet up. Now, by Friday midnight, even colder air, we are at or below freezing. 850 millibars up, 5,000 feet into the air at Huntsville. Brenham's at freezing, freezing at College Station and Livingston. So at that point in time, we may start to see some freezing precipitation if there's any moisture left. That is the hardest thing to pinpoint in a transition scenario like we're seeing here. Do we get the cold air to work in fast enough to meet up with the moisture? A lot of times the moisture will come on in, the cold air still to the north, moisture leaves, cold air comes in behind it. They don't meet up in time and you don't see that wintry mix. So that's the threat that we're having here, that this might not even come to fruition with the cold air not in place or cold enough air in place. National Weather Service already has winter storm watches posted just outside of our viewing area off to the west and southwest. Likelihood that these do get expanded at least north to the northeast northwest of Houston, likely as we head on into this afternoon. So we'll have to watch for that. And of course, we'll see it tweeted out and do a little cut in for you if that does happen. So my last thoughts here on our wintry weather threat, the models are trending a bit drier. Now, also when you get dry, cold air coming into place and you have moisture coming in on top of that, when that moisture falls, it starts to evaporate. A process called evaporative cooling gets underway, and that actually helps to draw down the colder air and lower air temperatures. So if in fact the precipitation is heavy enough to pull down some of that colder air to saturate the atmosphere enough and drop the air temperatures, that could certainly be a different scenario that plays out here. But for right now, it's a little bit drier and not a lot of moisture associated with it. Bridges and overpasses will be the most vulnerable, as I mentioned. Early Friday morning, any residual moisture on the roadways may tend to ice over if the winds don't do a good job and dry it out and clear things out from there. Overall, travel should not see any major impacts at all as we head into Thursday night and early Friday morning. We, however, are very chilly for several days after this system moves on out and for the upcoming weekend. For the rest of your forecast, the seven day coming up on 11 News at noon, you can join me there and we'll have the latest updates if there's any model changes too. We're gonna to do more of these updates online on social, on our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, throughout the day today, if there are any changes that uh, need to be put out to the masses. So we'll see you at noon.